Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be an oldie but a goodie. I'm going to be bringing you five book recommendations within a certain genre or theme. So if you're new to my channel and you didn't know, this is kind of a series I have here on my channel. I have versions where I give five book recommendations that are literary fiction, classics, I have a fantasy version, a BAME version and an LGBTQIA plus version. So there's a whole playlist of those if you care and want to check them out. <laughs> and today I'm going to be bringing you a historical historical fiction version. But like always, I have tried to include a bit of a mix in my recommendations because I know we all have different tastes even within genres, so hopefully there should be something for everyone. Also, for those of you who've been asking for a poetry version of this video, that will be coming up in a couple of weeks. So the first book that I'm going to recommend today is one of my favourite ever historical novels, and that is The Gustav Sonata by Rose Tremaine. At the beginning of this novel, we meet Gustav Perler as a young boy who is growing up in neutral Switzerland in the 1940s. And Gustav is a very lonely young boy. He is utterly devoted to his widowed single mother, who is strangely cold towards him. But then when Gustav goes to school, he makes friends with an intensely nervous boy called Anton Zwiebel, and the two boys become best friends, and Gustav is drawn out of his lonely isolation. So in this novel, we follow Gustav and Anton's relationship from when they're very young to when they're old men many decades later, as well as finding out more about Gustav's family and his parents. And we mainly just see the way that the two men's lives become so entwined and even dependent on each other. This novel explores themes of love and longing, self-restraint and control, and unhappiness as well, but its strength for me was definitely its themes of human relationships. This novel contains such a vast tangle of relationships that are all so complex but weave in and out of each other so seamlessly. This novel is clever, it's touching, and it's utterly believable. I couldn't recommend it more highly. I think Rose Tremaine is a beautiful writer. The next book that I'm going to recommend is Horse Water by Sarah Hall. So this is set in 1936 in Mardale, which is a tiny, very sheltered community up in the Lake District in England. At the beginning of this novel, a waterworks man arrives from industrial Manchester with plans to build a reservoir in the village. So this just sends the community into panic. <laughs> I love the setting in this novel. If you didn't know, I was brought up in the Lake District, so I do know the place in this book and all of the natural descriptions and the landscape was very familiar to me while I was reading this. So that gave me a really nice nostalgic feeling while I was reading. I would say even if you aren't familiar with the Lake District, you'll probably really enjoy the setting in this novel. It's just set in an undeniably beautiful part of the world. So this novel mainly focuses on small rural village life and it captures it so perfectly. Just seeing the way that these characters live their lives and what is ingrained in them and their reactions to change and their desperation to keep their community the way it is was just so interesting and so convincing. This is such a lovely little book and it is so underrepresented here on booktube. I honestly think it's beautiful and so many people would enjoy it, so I'd really like it if more people read this. <laughs> Next I'm going to recommend one that I actually read quite recently and that is See What I Have Done by Sarah Schmidt. So I'm sure you all know the premise of this one by now because it's been so popular in the past year or so, but if you don't, it's set in 1800s America and is a retelling of the Lizzie Borden murders in which a young girl called Lizzie was put on trial for the brutal murder of her father and stepmother. If you're looking for a historical novel that is gothic and has a really dark atmosphere and has a kind of air of mystery and a really sinister feeling around it, then this is 100% the book for you. So the atmosphere in this book is incredible. Schmidt uses such delicious and descriptive writing. She's constantly describing bodily fluids and pungent smells and oppressive temperatures. And it all just creates the most oppressive and claustrophobic atmosphere that I have ever read about. <laughs> the Borden household in this story is so terrible and toxic and you can really feel it. <laughs> this book isn't plot heavy, it isn't twisty and turny, but it is extremely all-encompassing and engrossing. If you like good writing, then this one's for you. The next book that I'm gonna recommend is Between Shades of Grey by Ruta Sepetys. So this is a young adult historical novel, but while it is written for a younger audience, I do think it can be just as impactful for adults as well. So this novel focuses on our protagonist, Lena, who is a 15-year-old Lithuanian girl when the Soviets barge into her home in 1941 and send her life into chaos. So Lena and her brother and her mother are separated from their father 
and are forced onto a really cramped and dirty train cart that is heading north to a working camp in Siberia. So this novel just follows Lena's extremely long and harrowing journey across many years and across thousands of miles. And as you can imagine, it is extremely emotional and impactful. This book really hit me hard whilst I read it. It genuinely took my breath away. This is an amazingly powerful novel about strength and love and hope. And I honestly think it holds really important and inspiring messages for everyone. And the final book that I'm going to recommend today is another one of my favourites, and that is The Tobacconist by Robert C. Thaler. So this novel is set in 1937 and follows our protagonist Franz, who is a 17-year-old boy, when he moves away from his home in the Austrian Lake District to the big bustling city of Vienna. And while Franz is in Vienna, he becomes an assistant to his mother's friend Otto, who runs a tobacconist shop, and he makes friends with one of the shop's most loyal customers, a Professor Freud. So this novel is at once a very tender coming-of-age story about a young man who is trying to navigate his way around a new city and the new relationships that he forms and also a really powerful depiction about the way that ordinary lives were profoundly affected by Nazi Germany in the late 1930s. The central relationship in this novel between Franz and Professor Freud is so charming. Freud gives Franz romantic advice and also tries to answer his questions about how to find happiness. And I also thought the writing was a major strength of this novel. It's very simple but elegant and I think it worked perfectly. I found this novel to be both thoroughly enjoyable and also deeply affecting and I would recommend it to anyone actually, even if you don't typically think of yourself as enjoying historical fiction. So those are five of my historical fiction recommendations guys. I really hope you enjoyed watching and found something that sparked your interest. I do have many more historical fiction recommendations, as with a lot of the videos in this series really. I have tons more to recommend, so I'll probably be doing part twos of some of the videos at some point. So thank you so much for watching everyone, I really hope you enjoyed. I would love to know what your favourite historical fiction book is, and if you've read any of these, and if you also liked them, or if you didn't like them. I'd like to hear it all, <laughs> and I will see you next week with my next video. Bye everyone!